Seamus Garvey, S-E-A-M-U-S-G-A-R-V-E-Y. I was uh, always fascinated by, by making things work and fixing things, so I was just completely preoccupied with fixing things, and I realized from a very young age that I was very bad at remembering things, um, but very good at just knowing how things worked and, and, uh, and making them work. And so it seemed a, a logical progression to me to, to go into a, a career that involved making things work and not so much about remembering long lists or long poems or long names. I made any number of uh, oscillators, uh, electrical things that just went buzz from a battery. That was absolutely fascinating. I made a kind of uh, primitive uh, arithmetic teaching tool which just involved making circuits and it was all made with thumbtacks pushed into a board with crude wires and a light bulb powered by a battery. And I made countless kites of all descriptions, uh, including some that had three strings on, not, not your two-string kite, so that you could control uh, lift as well as side-to-side -side movement. Um, and some of those plummeted with relatively disastrous results, I'm sorry to say, but it was all fun. Yeah, I suppose the thing that drove me towards engineering and science was uh, well, the realization of certainly things that I was good at, and I was good at maths, I was always good at maths, and that, that had to be driving you towards the science more than anything else. But also, I took quite a lot of inspiration from visits to the science museum and places like that, and, and I still have a vivid memory of a massive steam engine uh, in there and thinking that I've got to be involved with stuff like that. I'm a professor of dynamics, uh, which is basically a teacher of mechanical engineering who has a strong interest in research. And my area of research is dynamics, uh, mainly vibration, and mainly in that vibration, vibration of rotating machines. So it has to do with machines going around at very high speeds with very high power densities and making them run smooth. It's about energy and it comes from an appreciation of rotating machines, but in fact it doesn't involve them now very directly. Uh, it's about appreciating that as the country and indeed the whole world moves towards more renewable energy, wind powered and wave powered and tidal powered, we're going to need energy storage. And this project is about uh, using compressed air to store the energy and using the renewables to compress the air in the first place. And that's the bit that makes it different. Uh, we do things slightly differently from what's uh, currently happening. You have machines which are driven by the wind or the wave or tides, and those machines convert energy from nature directly into the form of compressed air. That compressed air will be hot. If you want the same amount of power that's just been generated, then you just expand it directly and you make electricity from that compressed air. If you want less power, you take a little bit of heat out of it and uh, you expand a small fraction with extra heat in it and you put the rest under the sea in a flexible container and you put it in already cool so that it doesn't lose any further heat into the sea. And then when the wind stops blowing or the tide happens to be turning, you can suck that energy back out and continue to generate. Uh, that's what well, is devastating. Uh, it's absolutely devastating, and I don't think that uh, even when you've written hundreds of proposals—well, maybe nobody's written hundreds, but uh, certainly many tens. I've written many tens of proposals, and uh, my success rate is as, as good as most. It's probably one in three, one in four, bouncing between those. Uh, and every proposal that you produce, you think this is marvelous. This is the best proposal I've ever written, and uh, sometimes the panels that judge these things for, for, for reasons that seem extraordinary to you will dismiss your beautifully crafted proposal and dispatch it into oblivion. And in some cases you can resurrect it and resubmit it again, but even in the best of those cases there's a wait. And in the worst of those cases it's simply gone, uh, never to be resurrected. And it is devastating and, and uh, you have a day or two of mourning and then you pick yourself back up and you write another one. This is what you do. Uh, the only thing, the only thing that occurs to me occasionally as a possibility is a pure mathematician. I, I could potentially have been quite satisfied as a pure mathematician. But 
um, I, I think I probably did choose the better path for me. It's, it's just so unconditionally true. Uh, you know, one thing you get to realize as an engineer is that if somebody asks you a question, the only correct answer is, it depends. You, it's almost impossible to give a definitive answer to, to any question because you rely on assumptions about materials and operating conditions and how, how it will be used and what's happened to it in the past and the tolerances that have been made on it and so on and so forth. There are always many factors and you can almost never put your finger on one cause or one, you can't predict anything with absolute certainty. Whereas in mathematics, you say these are the, these are what I, the, the things that I shall assume and then there is only one answer. It is absolutely certain. You can prove things beyond doubt. There is an absolute.